past has not been kind to my W520 ThinkPad. And come to think of it, neither has the future. If people were to take this machine on face value, just from all of its physical damage to its lack of Windows 10 update support going into the future, I think most people would consider this machine e-waste. And that's a real shame, because the W520 is the last of its kind. The last of a pedigree of original IBM design. Beyond this point, Lenovo never made another that was quite as good as this one, in my opinion. Beyond this point in time, they changed the keyboard up to a more traditionally seen chiclet style that I personally don't like. They locked out the batteries so that they'd only accept Lenovo sanctioned batteries with a special lockout chip. They installed built-in viruses like Superfish that track the machine and gather statistics at all times. From this point forward, ThinkPads were no longer ThinkPads. They were some amalgamation of what Lenovo wanted and what people wanted. So, needless to say, considering this is the highest performance model of the original design, I want to keep it going. And I found a way to do that. You see, the problem is, as I said, Windows 10 is no longer updating for the W520. At this point in time, we're stuck on version 1909, and it'll never get any better from what I can see. Not only that, but Windows 10 has issues with the Lenovo's Optimus implementation. This is the method that it uses to switch between its integrated graphics processor and the dedicated GPU. In this case, uh, 2000M Quadro. So, what can we do about it? Well, in Windows, your only option is to fiddle around with the Windows 7 installer for the Optimus drivers. The Windows 8.1 and 10.1 don't work. So, you have to go and grab that fiddle around with a newer version of the NVIDIA driver and repackage it into something that works and the whole process is very kludgy. But if you're looking to keep the machine fully up to date and on a secure new operating system that you can trust, check out Manjaro. Manjaro is a form of Linux based on Arch. It's available in a handful of GUIs that are kept up to date such as XFCE, KDE Plasma, GNOME, and Architect. So you can pick and choose what user interface you'd like to use with it, and all of them are fairly good, but in my experience, I recommend KDE Plasma. At this point you might be thinking, oh god, Linux, the last thing I want to touch. I have no idea how to use it, and it's insanely complicated. And I think that's where you're wrong. When it compares to trying to get Windows 10 to work properly with this machine, Linux is actually easier. And not only that, but these days it's gotten way better when it comes to software compatibility. So, if you're curious, all you have to do is go grab whatever flavor you'd like off of Manjaro's official website, throw the ISO onto a flash drive with something like Rufus, install it into your machine, and then try it out. You can boot off the flash drive, and that will give you a full Manjaro environment to play around with to see if you like it or not. Not only that, but once you are ready to install, Manjaro supports encryption, which means that you can lock your drive with a master password. This is convenient if your machine ever does break down and you do inevitably have to recycle it. You should still wipe your drives just to be sure, but in the case where you forget, at least no Tom, Dick, or Harry can just plop your drive into a USB reader and see everything that you've been doing. But aside from the encryption, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Manjaro's awesome features. First of all, remember that whole video driver thing I was talking about? Well, if you don't need the absolute pinnacle of gaming performance or don't feel like messing around with it too much, all you really need to do is web browse with it, it works fine out of box with the open source drivers. Everything just works, and you don't really have to think about it. If you do decide to get a little bit deeper into things, you can install what's called Optimus Manager, and Optimus Manager QT, which is the graphic interface for it. What this allows you to do is, through a widget in your taskbar, change which GPU that your machine is using. Now you do have to log out to switch between GPUs, but ultimately I find it to be a very elegant solution. The machine also comes with an option called Bumblebee. What Bumblebee does is pretty similar to what Optimus Manager does, except it runs it in a hybrid mode where you can use either or, you simply have to specify to the program using a certain command line in the shortcut. I find that to be a little bit more kludgy than just switching your GPUs, but the point I'm trying to make is that Linux gives you the option to do whatever you want. It comes with a full suite of software for managing office documents, a solid web browser, and pretty much everything you'd need as far as customization goes for the user interface, especially on KDE Plasma, as I mentioned before. So I can really recommend this as a stable and 
great way to keep your W520 alive. It's a fantastic operating system, I really can't talk it up enough. But enough talking, let's take a look. Here's my W520 running Runelite. It's running at the maximum FPS and is a fantastic experience in Manjaro. Another thing to keep in mind is that with Wine you can install EXEs as well and run them, most of them, just fine. Now, granted, being on Manjaro Linux means that you're going to not have DirectX as a rendering option, which means that you're going to lose some performance, and considering the GPU in this machine is weak already, eh, it kinda sucks. But considering that most people have completely given up on even running their NVIDIA GPUs, anything is better than nothing, and even with that said, it's enough for me. Finally, there's the AUR, the Arch User Repository. This is a giant repository of a bunch of software that you can download for Manjaro Linux. Mostly, all you have to do is remember three commands. Git clone, cd or change directory, and make package dash si. These are the three commands you need to know to install software. And if you run into any problems or need to figure out how to uninstall or really have any questions about how to use Manjaro, it's extremely well documented. All you really have to do is Google your problem. So yeah. When it comes to keeping my ThinkPad alive in 2021 and making sure that it's still both secure and serving a use, I switched over to Manjaro and I haven't been happier. And I think anyone who's trying to keep this machine alive or usable should probably consider doing the same. This will never be a historic piece, and unfortunately some pieces for the W520 are just too expensive to be worth replacing, like the power adapter for example. So I'm at a point where the machine doesn't really serve any practical traveling use, but for an at-home throw around, it's still got plenty of life left, and that makes me really happy. So thank you for checking out this video on how to keep your W520 alive. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope that you try out Manjaro and give it a nice second life.